Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of April. Antagi chief says nothing to panic after India reports cases of XC variant of COVID. Protesters pitch tents in Colombo to mount pressure on Sri Lankan president to quit. And Pakistan opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif, elected new PM, replaces Imran Khan. And now for all the details. Chief of India's vaccine advisory group, Intagi, has said that there was no need to panic about the new XE variant of coronavirus after cases were reported from Maharashtra and Gujarat states. The COVID-19 variant Omicron is giving rise to many new variants, majorly from X series like XE and others. Chief of the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, Antagi N.K. Arora on Monday said that there was no need to panic about the new XE variant of coronavirus after cases were reported from India's Maharashtra and Gujarat states. Arora said Omicron variants of the X series are not causing serious diseases and do not show a very rapid spread as per Indian data. Earlier, a case of XE, a subvariant of Omicron, was detected in Maharashtra's Mumbai. But the health ministry had denied the reports, saying the evidence does not suggest the presence of the new variant. Reports suggest that one case each of the XM variant has also been found in Gujarat and Mumbai. These variants will keep on occurring. There is nothing to panic because there is, it, none of these are causing severe disease or at the moment from Indian data, it does not show very rapid spread of the variant. Second thing is that INSACOG as a network is very meticulously looking at all these uh, viral isolates and wherever there is suspicion, as I said in the beginning, two and three layers of testing is done. Meanwhile, India on Monday recorded 861 new coronavirus infections, taking the total tally of COVID-19 cases to 4.3 million, while the active cases dipped to 11,058. The death toll climbed to 521,691 with six fresh fatalities. India began administering booster doses of COVID-19 vaccine to all adults from Sunday, although free third doses will be limited to frontline workers and those older than 60 who get them at government centres. The country has given 1.85 billion vaccine doses among its population of 1.35 billion. Of these, 82% are the AstraZeneca dose made domestically and called Covishield. Other vaccines used in India are the domestically developed Covaxin and Corbovax and Russia's Sputnik V. And scores of protesters have set up tents outside the presidential secretariat in Colombo, calling for Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa to step down amid the worst economic crisis in decades. Meanwhile, Udaya Gamanpela, a leader from Sri Lanka's ruling coalition, said that three members of the alliance had proposed forming an interim government. Protesters have pitched tents in a garden outside the presidential secretariat in Sri Lankan capital, Colombo, calling for President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to step down amid a deepening economic crisis afflicting their country. Sri Lankans have been suffering from shortages of fuel, power, food and other items for weeks, and doctors say the entire health system could now collapse. Street protests have been held nearly non-stop for more than a month now, over rising inflation due to currency devaluation and mounting debt. We are here to uh, ask the government to respectively step down. We would like the president and the prime minister to step down because we find them incompetent to do the jobs that they were elected to do, which is govern the country and take responsibility for their actions. So our relentless go at it is going to be as it is. Until they step down, we will not move from here. Days after warning a no-confidence motion, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa on Monday said he will use all constitutional provisions to change the government. Meanwhile, Udaya Gamanpilla, a leader from Sri Lanka's ruling coalition, said on Monday that three members of the alliance had proposed forming an interim government, which will have an all-party committee to make key decisions and a new prime minister. 
President Rajapaksa's elder brother Mahinda currently serves as the Prime Minister. This comes as the entire cabinet resigned last week, while the opposition has rejected calls for a unity government to deal with the country's worst economic crisis in decades. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's parliament on Monday elected opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif as the country's new prime minister after a week-long constitutional crisis that climaxed on Sunday when Imran Khan lost a no-confidence vote. 70-year-old Shehbaz, president of PMLN party, emerged as the leader of a united opposition to topple Imran Khan, who has claimed that the United States was behind his downfall, which Washington has denied. Shehbaz is younger brother of three-time prime minister Nawaz Sharif, who has lived for the last two years in London for medical treatment since being let out of jail, where he was serving a sentence for corruption. Ahead of the vote to elect the new Premier, members of Imran Khan's PTI party staged a walkout after submitting in mass resignations, potentially creating the need for urgent by-elections for their seats. No elected Prime Minister has completed a full term in Pakistan since its formation in 1947, though Imran Khan is the first to be removed by a no-confidence vote. And moving on to news from Afghanistan, UN Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Deborah Alliance, has called on Taliban to take urgent steps to ensure access to education for all Afghans, raising concern over its decision to extend a ban on girls' school over grade 6. Earlier, a meeting of the US and EU officials in Brussels emphasized that international aid will be dependent on actions by the Taliban to live up to its commitments on providing rights to women and girls. for students around the country. That's according to reopening of schools for girls because of a text UN envoy Deborah Lyons has called for urgent steps from the Taliban regime to ensure that all Afghan girls are able to attend schools in Afghanistan. Meeting Khairullah Khairkhwa, the Taliban's acting minister of information and culture, Lyons raised her concern about girls' education and media freedom in Afghanistan. The Taliban last month backtracked on an announcement that high schools would open for girls, saying that they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with the Islamic law for them to reopen. The move has drawn widespread criticism from the international community. Earlier, Lyons attended a series of meetings of envoys and representatives of the US and European countries in Brussels, which stressed that the scope of international donor assistance will depend, among other things, on the right and ability of girls to attend equal education at all levels. The Islamic Emirate has, however, said that the provision of aid should not become a political tool. Last week, the European Parliament also deplored the steadily deteriorating situation of women and girls in Afghanistan. Since the Taliban took control in August 2021, media freedom also continues to crumble in Afghanistan, with women journalists and being more hit news the hardest, Afghanistan. with four the out of five National of them Park no longer in central working, Afghanistan was suggest. once frequented by thousands of domestic tourists and intrepid international travelers. After the Taliban took over last year, the war on country's economy collapsed. Local tourists hold U.S. sanctions responsible for the situation, saying only few tourists visit the region. The picturesque Bande Amir National Park is an oasis of striking blue lakes amid the Hindu Kush mountains. Situated in Afghanistan's central Bamiyan province, Bande Amir comprises six natural lakes and is separated by natural dams made of travertine. It was a popular tourist destination frequented by thousands of domestic tourists and intrepid international travellers in the past. But now it is deserted due to US sanctions and only fewer tourists visit here. The war-torn country's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after U.S. and other foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. A tourist said economic problem and poverty have ruined the lives of Afghans and without money, you can't come here for fun. امی کشور آمریکا می کاره بالای مردم افغانستان کدام مردم افغانستان با یک کار بسیار با حالت خراب آورده و بسیار مردم مشکلات اقتصادی داره مشکل اقتصادی زیاد است کار نیست در افغانستان جوانو بیکار است پیسه که نباشه مردم راحت چکر نمیاد 
Washington froze some 9 billion US dollars of Afghan assets after the Taliban took over Afghanistan, which worsened the war-torn country's already fragile economy. US President Joe Biden, in a decree issued in February, allocated 3.5 billion US dollars from the frozen Afghan assets to the 9-11 victims' families and earmarked another 3.5 billion US dollars as humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. The decision, which was further exacerbated Afghanistan's economic woes, has been widely condemned in Afghanistan. And as COVID-19 situation has eased, people across Nepal's Kathmandu Valley are taking part in Sito Machindranath Jatra, one of the biggest chariot festivals in the Himalayan nation. Currently, the number of active cases of COVID-19 stands at around 590. Festivities return to Nepal with hundreds of people taking part in Seto Machindranath Jatra, one of the biggest chariot festivals in Kathmandu Valley over the past weekend, as COVID-19 cases have declined substantially in recent days. The three-day-long chariot procession honoring the god of rain is also known as Jana Bahadeya Jatra. During the festival, a skyscraping chariot of Seto Machindranath is taken from one place to another to honor the god of rain. Each day when the chariot reaches its terminus, a group of soldiers fire their rifles into the air. <laughs> According to Health Ministry data, the number of active cases of coronavirus in Nepal stood at 592 as of Sunday. In view of the annual festival, COVID-19 restrictions were lifted by the local authorities. The event, which began on Saturday, was slated to conclude on Tuesday. And a cafe in India's eastern Kolkata, run and managed by HIV-positive staff members, is giving people working there hope and opportunities to earn a living. It is Asia's first cafe that is run by HIV-positive staff members. The cafe is setting an example in bringing about some change in the lives of people who are facing social stigma. Cafe Positive, an eatery run by HIV-positive patients in India's eastern Kolkata city, is one of the first such cafes giving their employees a new lease of life in a world full of taboo. The cafe that started operating in 2018 is run by seven young adults HIV-positive staffs. The intention behind the initiative is to make them financially independent and to provide them livelihood. According to the youth like their life, this endeavour was also filled with challenges, with landowners refusing to give them space. However, once the journey started, there was no option for them but to make it work. This is one of the first cafe bowl sakte aap, challenge bowl sakte, jahan pe HIV positive young adults, jisko kahi aur kaam nahi milta hai. Bohut saar HIV positive young adults hai humare saath jo जिसको बहुत सारा काम से निकल चुका है, they have been thrown out. So all those people, all those young adults have joined us, and we formed a group. We came together to run this show. As a part of their code of ethics, the employees first explain to the customers that the staff at Cafe Positive are HIV positive patients. Some customers are skeptical after that, while some are more accepting and are even delighted at the initiative. The group plans to open more such cafes across India to spread awareness about HIV AIDS and giving employment opportunities to them amid taboos. According to a United Nations report, a total of 2.1 million people infected from HIV virus are estimated to be living in India in 2017. The patients often face discrimination in the society and sometimes at workplaces because of taboo and lack of awareness. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.